Hello and welcome to Old Worm. Today we will be taking a look at the anatomy of a pigeon. Pigeons are part of a group of animals called birds. Bird anatomy is fascinating because it's just a series of increasingly ridiculous adaptations that it needs in order to do the flying thing. You'll see what I mean. Like all birds, pigeons have feathers. If you look at a single feather, you can see that it snaps into the classic feather shape. This happens because the feathers have tiny barbs on them with even tinier hooks that catch on the neighboring barbs. This interlocking structure keeps the feather rigid for flight, because you just can't fly with a floppy feather. I mean, look at ostriches. The pigeon also has a beak here. Birds use their beak to do a variety of tasks. Eating, grooming, picking up objects, killing prey, fighting, foraging for food, courtship, feeding young, you know, all kinds of bird things. It also has a tongue, which you can see if I open the beak. Right there, the pink structure. Here's the eye, which the pigeon uses to see. Pigeons have amazing eyesight and can even see ultraviolet light. Humans can't even see that. Because of their excellent eyesight, pigeons have been used in human search and rescue missions. And here are the nostrils, which the pigeons use to smell and breathe. Now moving down, you can see the cloaca, which is the Latin word for sewer. It's very fitting, because this is both the end of the digestive tract and the exit for the urogenital tract. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So first, place the bird ventral side up, then pluck the feathers from this area so it doesn't get in your way. Now starting from here, use scissors to cut off. Be careful not to rupture the crop up here. Use a scalpel to peel back the skin and pin it back. Now that I've removed the skin and peeled it back, you can see pink here. This is because this pigeon is double injected the red is for the arteries, and the blue is for the veins. You can see these large muscles here in the breast. Here's another one. And these are called the pectoralis muscles. These are the muscles that are used for flight, and so they are the largest and most powerful muscles in the bird. Flying requires a lot of energy, as you can imagine. So these muscles have quite a lot of work to do. Now let's use a scalpel and scissors to remove these muscles. Now you can see this bone in the middle, and this is called the keel, and it's an extension of the sternum that provides an anchor for the flight muscles that we saw before to attach to. Now I'm just going to remove the keel by cutting up diagonally with scissors, and then we can open up the chest cavity. First, let's take a look at the respiratory system. Birds have the most efficient respiratory machinery known in vertebrates, which they'll need in order to fly. Flying requires a ton of energy consumption, which means a lot more oxygen. In fact, even with this efficient respiratory system, birds breathe rapidly during flight, up to 450 breaths per minute for a pigeon. That's more than 7 breaths per second. Birds have really unique structures called air sacs. There are 9 air sacs, and they look a bit like soap bubbles when inflated. These air sacs are deflated, but you can still see some of the deflated membranes here. So you can see part of the deflated air sac here. These air sacs are all connected to the lungs. 
So air sacs don't play a direct role in gas exchange, but they do keep oxygen richer moving in one direction through the avian respiratory system. To see why this is important, think of your own lungs. Airflow is bi-directional in your lungs, meaning that it moves back and forth into and out of the lungs. As a result, fresh air coming into your lungs is mixed with old air, and this mixed air has less oxygen. By keeping the fresh air moving in one direction, bird lungs make more oxygen available to diffuse into the blood. Now let's look at some of the structures in the respiratory system. Here's the trachea, right here, and if you follow it all the way down here, you're going to be able to see the lungs. So there's one on each side. It's a bit hard to see, but there's one here, and there's another one right here. Right there. So now let's take a look at the heart, which is right here. Again, because birds decided to take up the absurd task of flying, their hearts had to become equally as absurd. As you can see the heart is really big, a bird's heart weighs up to twice as much as that of a mammal of equal size because its flight muscles need a bigger heart to send them plenty of oxygen and nutrients. Their heart rate is also insane. Pigeon hearts can be 200 times per minute, a lot more than a human 70 beat per minute. A bird has a four-chambered heart just like ours. And you can see these two structures here, here and here, and these are the auricles, and below them inside would be the atria, and the two ventricles would be around here. For a closer look at the anatomy of the heart, you can go see our sheep heart dissection video, which we'll link in the description below. Okay, so now let's take a look at the digestive system. So when the bird eats food, it first enters this tube here, called the esophagus. The lower part of this esophagus then leads into this large sac right here called the crop. The crop is where food is stored until parents can feed their babies. Crop milk, which is a mixture of lipids and proteins that's basically baby food for birds, is also secreted here. And now we're going to cut open the crop to see what's inside. As you can see, this is where all the grains are stored. Birds don't have any teeth, so that's why all these grains are completely whole like this. So now let's take a look at the stomach. Birds need to digest their food in record time because they need to keep up with their insanely high metabolic rate, which is again a byproduct of flying, which requires a lot of energy. A bird can digest food six times faster than a rabbit. To do this, they have two stomachs. The upper stomach, called the proventriculus, is hard to see here, we'll see it better later. And the lower stomach, the circular structure here, is called the gizzard. The gizzard crushes and grinds up the food. The gizzard has a hard job because birds have no teeth, so it swallows food whole. When I cut the gizzard open, you'll see small stones or pebbles inside the gizzard that the bird swallowed in order to help grind up the food. So you can see all these rocks inside the gizzard, and partially digest the food. So this is a rock. Okay, so now let's take a look at the liver. Right here, all this brown stuff is the liver. The liver is an important organ that is involved with digesting food, storing and filtering the blood, producing a variety of proteins, and generally a lot of functions that you would want to continue if you want to live. Okay, so now I'm just going to remove the liver. Now that the liver is gone, you can see this upper stomach right here. This is called the proventriculus, and it secretes digestive enzymes that break down the food. And if you go down, here's the intestine, which is where food is digested and absorbed. Between the coils of the intestine is the pancreas, right here, which produces digestive enzymes. Now I'm just going to remove the digestive tract.
Finally, let's take a look at the urogenital system. Now you can see the two kidneys, one here, and another one here. The kidneys get rid of metabolic waste by producing uric acid, which is then removed from the body. Now, this bird is female, so you can see a single ovary here, the circular structure. But if this bird were male, you'd see two small structures called the testes. Alright, that's the end of our pigeon dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about pigeons to send you on your way. Why do we never see baby pigeons? It's because they usually never leave their nest until they're fully grown and as big as, or even bigger, than their parents. Trust me, it's probably for the best. Baby pigeons are not pretty to look at. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe for more.